Steve Gill. Hey, welcome in. This is the Steve Gill Show, the talk of Tennessee. Talking with the uh, the big guy in Tennessee, the Tennessee governor, Bill Haslam. Fresh back from uh, visiting our troops in uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And, uh, well, has a few other things on his uh, platter as well. Longtime friend. Man, I guess I hadn't seen you in a little while, but uh, welcome in. Glad to have you in studio, and uh, thanks for the great job you're doing. Are you having fun? You know, I am. If anybody tells you they don't like being governor of their home state, something's wrong with them. I mean that. It is a great job. And if- Is it what you expected? It is. Maybe, um, you know, the variety of things that come at you. You know, we deal with everything from agricultural issues to economic development to educating four-year-olds to Ph.D. students to running prisons, building roads, helping folks with mental health issues. You know, the, the, the variety of what it is is maybe even a little more than I thought. When you look at the people that, that you've been able to bring in, I, I know that uh, it, it's, I mean, you, you go from literally zero to 60. Yeah. You, get, you get elected, <laughs> then you got to start putting together a cabinet, then you get inaugurated, and then, you know, suddenly you've got to start putting people into places and finding people, putting them in the yeah. right places. People want to judge what you've done after about 100 days. You don't even have all your people in place after 100 days. It's really true. You brought that up to me back when we were campaigning. I, you, you, might rem- or you might remember that that was kind of the key deal, and, and that was a point I'd been making. A lot of media people ask you all the Every question in the world except, who, what, what experience have you had hiring people? What are your philosophies? How do you approach that? And that really is a thing. I have 22 commissioners plus another three or four people who report to me. You know, there's no way I can go in and run all of their all of their departments for them. So I better hire great people, have a great way to communicate with them, but let them run their show. Without it, we had last night over at uh, the residence, we had a group of farmers over who are uh, who grow tennis, obviously Tennessee products, uh, celebrating 25 years of pick Tennessee uh, products. But they were asking me lots of intricate agriculture uh, questions, which I couldn't answer. But fortunately, I have Julius Johnson. Johnson, our commissioner, who does know all that. And, and and that's why it's so important to get the right person. And part of the challenge as a new governor is you get literally thrown right into the legislative <laughs> session. I mean, you, literally, again, you get yeah. you get hired, yep. you have to hire all your people, you go get inaugurated, and then you're already kind of knee-deep in the legislative session. So literally the first session, you're almost just hanging on. You now have a chance to almost, it seems like, kind of catch a breath, figure, okay, now what are we going to do? And you can be proactive because you've almost had to be reactive up until this day. You're, you're really accurate there. And the other thing you left out of that, you also have a budget due right away, which is obviously the biggest thing you do because budget drives policy and everything else. So I, I've, I've told somebody, I said this. And with ju- a team that's not worked <coughs> together, doesn't know each right. other. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. So I've told people, really, this job starts at the wrong time. Starting Jan- January 15th, when you go into office, is about the busiest time. Legislature comes, brand new team, budget due. Uh, you know, you can't do it, but if you could, starting office right now would be great. Then you could get get a lot of things in place. When the legislature came, you'd be ready. But as you kind of approach things now, you now have a little bit of an experience of, okay, this is what's coming. Very Here's different. how we have to do things. You know, if I, if I underestimate anything, it'd be um, the volume of the legislative process. And, and you know, there are 2,200 bills brought up that you need to be on top of. Um, there's a lot of, you know, you got 132 reps and senators uh, who you're working to get to know and build relationships with. It's easy to let um, that drive everything you do, but then you realize, oh, oh boy, we've got a state government to run, too. Um, So the learning how to get ahead of that process, as you just said, is key. And I do think your your second year you'll know a lot more, for, for one thing, just about how it works. You know, we were told during the campaign, and really during the past year, that you know the economic numbers were dire, right. that the the stimulus money had gone away, that it was going to be blood in the streets. You know, there was debate during the election: are they going to lay off a hundred thousand state employees? Right. I'm being euphemistic, right, right, but right. you know, are there none? And there were real, all these issues. And then we got into the legislative session, and maybe it's like a duck up above the surface; you couldn't see much going on. But it wasn't the catastrophe. It wasn't the disaster. You all went through a session, didn't raise taxes, balanced the budget, didn't have massive layoffs. What did we miss here? Where was the chaos? The well, crisis? I think two or three things, just to be frank. Uh, number one, we had a legislature that worked together with the administration real well. The budget passed unanimously. It's the first time it's happened in a long time. I think people realized we did have to make some cuts. And this year's budget, you know, over a billion dollars, you know, with a B, less than last year. So we made some real cuts. Um, but you didn't see the chaos you've seen in other states. We didn't see protests, you know, people yeah. camping out in the lobby of the of the Capitol. We didn't see the kind of 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 attacks that we were seeing in these other states where where hard choices were also made. 
Again, was it because you had a Republican legislator that had been there for a while? I, I think that hap- that helps some, and that we definitely our, our, our legislation. Number one, it helps to have everybody in the same party. Just whether you're all Democrat or Republican, it just helps you get kind of everybody on the same team. Number one, number two, we did have some experienced folks who understood that there was a lot of one-time money in last year's budget, and so there was a pretty good awareness of that. And then I think the third thing we we got a little bit of extra money back at the end of the year on some some things that that helped um, keep us from making some of those last cuts that are the most painful. You know, the further you cut, you know, the first cut doesn't hurt so much. The second, a little more. The further you go, the more it hurts. And we were, as we were reaching a little deeper, we thought we'd have to do a few more things that we didn't because uh, we had some extra revenue come in. Well, this month's numbers have, have looked good. Uh, again, the Commissioner of Finance Administration able to kind of close out the year with, with a little extra money coming in that kind of, again, help you not have to make some last-minute deep cuts. I think we have. Now, I think the the reality of that is, you know, I, I stay fairly in tune with a lot of folks in the business community. We have a lot of large kind of bellwether uh, company. I mean, a FedEx can really tell you what's happening in the economy. You know, we have a lot of companies like that in Tennessee. Unfortunately, I think our economy slowed up a lot in the last four weeks. So the numbers we reported for the state, were th- we report them in, as of July. That's when we collect them, but they're, they're for June's business. I think starting somewhere second week of July, um, the economy has slowed down considerably. I think part of us do the, you know, uh, Washington couldn't have given us a more uncertain environment. If, if you're thinking about investing capital, you want to have confidence in the environment you're going into. And, Washington hasn't given anyone confidence. Well, in the downgrade, people are saying the credit downgrade may have an impact on states. How concerned are you about that? I, I'm a little concerned about that. I'm more concerned about just the overall economy. I, we we're not doing. If if you put a prescription for how to, like I said, how to take people's confidence away uh, from investing capital, uh, it's what we've done. And I think you're seeing a lot of businesses say, I'm not sticking my neck out until things get a little bit more certain than they are now. That's what that's what we're going to feel the impact of more. And that's going to lag in, in the impact. That's what you're going to see in the next two months, three months, four months. No not, question. Not in this month. There's no question. But there, there, it's exactly right. So we'll, we'll see that. I, I'm... I'm not I'm not pessimistic about the the current fiscal year win, which started July one, but I, I don't see any any wild improvement at all either. We were together a few weeks ago when Scott Walker was was right. in town, Governor Scott Walker in Wisconsin. They just had the recall battles going on. You know, they literally took a three billion dollar budget deficit, have turned it into a several hundred million dollar budget surplus in Wisconsin. Turned things around with some of the same things that we've done here in Tennessee. How pleased were you to see that the recall efforts? You know, they spent thirty million dollars going after a couple yeah. of the state senators. And they've still got control of the Senate, and and it looks like any recall effort directed at him may fail as well. You got to feel good as you look at some of your fellow governors making tough choices, doing pretty well politically as well. Yeah, I do. I mean, Scott has that they made really hard choices in a lot of areas, and the law up there is just wrong. I mean, you shouldn't be able to recall somebody after a year, and then you have to go, you know, reignite your whole campaign and raise money, and you have outside interests, and that case they had a whole lot of labor union money come into it that's just the wrong way to do no time to do the job bingo uh and so that that, the the wisconsin process is not a good one and uh scott could be eligible for recall next year and i'm i'm thinking the way that they fought this back this time and you know the democrats were excited because they'd won two of the districts but those were districts that obama got 60 percent plus in last time so I'm not sure. It's, and it's one a, they only won by like one point was a guy that you know has a little bit of a scandal. Just you know left his right. wife for his 20 year old mistress or something. So right. there were other things at play in those two races. Which is always a truth in politics. People try to see trends and they see them what they want, but there's usually a whole lot of factors. So you're, you're right about that as well. Uh, but but I, I think that was encouraging. I think it, it would have been harmful if. Uh, if uh, the Wisconsin recalls had worked in a big way. You get to work with a lot of these other governors, and you have to look around the room and go, man, we've got some great rising stars. <laughs> when you look at at, uh, at South Carolina, at Florida with Rick yeah. Scott, you look at Wisconsin. I mean, again, you just look all over the country. Man, there's some great governors. Well, we do. And some new and old. I mean, I take a guy like Haley Barber, who's going out in Mississippi, who's, who I think has done a terrific job. Um, uh, Chris Christie up in New Jersey is he's smart, he's funny. If you're choosing who to sit next to at lunch, you want to sit next to Chris because he'll entertain you the whole time. Um, Rick Scott, if you want somebody to pick up the tab. <laughs> <laughs> Rick's great at explaining health care. what you yeah, want out of the right. lunch. That's right. So uh, it, it's a, I mean, there's I, like I said, Don, the trip I just got back from Iraq and Afghanistan I went with two great Western governors, Gary Herbert from Utah and Brian Sandoval from Nevada. We have a lot of good, smart people who are in it for the right reasons. And that, that's encouraging. 
here in Tennessee, education was a big uh, focal yeah. point, and and you had you know kind of your agenda and your perspective. The the teachers union battles got put on that. You've been quoted at length in, in a lot of papers. A lot of people have been critical of of basically kind of backing off of what the Republicans did and almost apologizing to the union for for doing what most people think was the right thing to do to try and you know bring this back to a level of sanity. Were, were those con- quotes taken out of context? Are you apologetic of what was done in Tennessee or not? No, let, let me be real clear. We, we start out with a, what we thought was a really aggressive agenda on education, tenure reform, which we thought was the most important thing. Prior to this, uh, if you taught three years in one day in Tennessee, you were granted tenure, and about 97% of the people were, that got to that point were granted. We thought that was wrong, and so we came with a very, uh, I think, uh, innovative tenure reform. Number two, charter school reform to, to make it easier. It took the cap off, made it easier so that uh, achievement school districts could uh, could authorize charters. We did several things there that make that important. We weren't. I'm not apologetic about what happened with the teachers in, in collective bargaining at all. It, that just wasn't part of our initial um, initial proposal. We really tried to, to do the things this year that I ran on in the campaign to, to try to be consistent to that. And that wasn't something we talked about when the process came up. I said, well, if we're going to talk about that, there's certain things that are really important. Number one, let's make sure that uh, we can promote people or keep people in, in layoff situations in terms of merit, not seniority. And so that was a huge change and was a Addressed. Um, we're going to talk a little bit. Right. No child left behind. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you're wanting to kind of ratchet back on that, so we make progress. The problem is in Memphis. I think 16 percent of right. the schools in Memphis are meeting the threshold of 40 percent uh, acceptability in math, 49 percent in reading. Only 16 percent are even hitting that level. How do we make progress when we're not even going to measure progress? with tough standards. We'll talk a little bit about that. You just got back, as you mentioned, from Afghanistan and Iraq, visiting with our troops. Horrific, tragic story in Afghanistan with 30 uh, dead in a helicopter shoot down. We'll talk about all that and more with Governor Bill Haslam, Tennessee governor, when we come back for more of the Steve Gill Show, the talk of Tennessee.